Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome back to our somewhat unrealistic recreation of Frankfurt that we used in the last video to discuss the idea of asteroid collisions in the city. In this video, we're going to talk about something completely different. We're going to talk about tsunamis. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And to start this video, I really wanted to talk about various misconceptions of tsunamis and what tsunamis are not. Well, first of all, tsunamis are not actually waves. You wouldn't really, sh we shouldn't be calling them waves because they behave very differently from waves. And I don't really know what's happening to those guys, but I think they're just saying hi to each other. Anyway, so yes, waves usually move up and down. They're essentially uh, circular motions of water, where tsunamis move side to side, which is kind of interesting. So another way of seeing this is imagine your dog um, drinking water from its bowl. When a dog is licking its water and it creates these tiny waves, those are actually waves. But if your dog suddenly hits the bowl and the bowl hits the refrigerator and the water spills uh, from the bowl onto the floor, that would be an example of what tsunami is like. So it's a very highly energetic event where water doesn't actually behave as a wave, but behaves as something a little bit different. Now, interestingly, what we've discovered recently uh, is that tsunamis are usually not caused by meteorites. As a matter of fact, one of the papers I'm posting in the description below says that um, asteroids or bolides or any kind of rocks falling onto the water, unless they fall right next to the city, will not actually cause a tsunami. And this is a very interesting phenomenon because we've discovered that... Um, even a super large asteroid that's about to land right there is not really going to cause a tsunami. It might cause a bit of a wave, but it will be very localized and will not increase the water level by a lot. And as a matter of fact, as you'll see in a second, it's very likely to cause very minimal destruction. So this is something that the Hollywood movies, like for example, Armageddon and Deep Impact, definitely had us um, fooled about because I was always under the impression that uh, if a meteorite struck water, it would cause a tsunami, but it really doesn't. So let's find out what, ha what happens here. And so here comes our beautiful rock from space that's about to hit this bridge. Hopefully it goes through the bridge and actually hits the water. And it will very likely create a bit of a wave, but it's not going to be a tsunami wave. We can hear it coming, we can hear it coming, we don't see it yet, I don't know where it's coming from. It's probably coming from the other side, there it is. No, that's the sun, that's the sun. Where are you? There you are, you're coming from that side. Alright, and here we go, and boom! A meteor strike has occurred. Avoid the impact site and head to shelter if any is available. So interestingly, it did create a wave, but you would not call this wave a tsunami. It's going to dissipate really quickly, it's going to lose energy very, very quickly, and by the time it gets to the shore, it's very likely going to do very minimal damage. But nevertheless, because it occurred so close to the city, it may cause a bit of a damage nevertheless. And so here it comes, hitting these little houses of these really rich people that decided to build their house on the shore of our fake Frankfurt. And they're about to be completely eliminated and destroyed. Now, so what exactly is a tsunami yet? And let's just talk about it briefly while we're watching the destruction from this mini wave that we've created with an asteroid. So tsunamis are actually usually caused by the large displacement, displacement of uh, ground underneath the ocean floor. So this can happen in, you know, in two situations. One is if there is an earthquake that shifts the ground underneath, or there is an underwater landslide which can also create just as big of a tsunami as an earthquake and landslides are usually caused by uh, either an earthquake or just unstable sediment that deposits deposits over time now interestingly one of the largest tsunamis ever produced and ever recorded in modern history was actually from an underwater landslide <laughs> these police cars are actually just driving through this wave like nothing happened uh, so uh, back in I believe it was the 60s or maybe even the 50s, uh, there was a very large landslide in, an, in a bay in Alaska, which actually created a wave that was over 500 meters tall. Uh, this is over 1,500 feet tall. And that wave um, was so large that basically it 
almost right away hit the shore and the only four people that were um, in that bay at that moment were actually fishing and two of them died but two of them survived to tell the tale so this was uh, the biggest uh, tsunami we've recorded and this was caused by um, a landslide but the landslide tsunamis usually don't carry very far either so just like the meteorite tsunami you just saw it's already done it's finished that's it that's all there was there's no more waves and uh, I think it destroyed some of the houses but even not so much. This rich house is still standing and still looking very rich. The second largest um, landslide tsunami was in 1963 in Italy and that tsunami was about 262 or uh, um, 262 meters or 860 feet tall and it was actually next to a dam and it was able to overflow the dam and basically destroy the cities that were um, after the dam, killing quite a lot of people. But most uh, mega tsunamis, tsunamis that are basically able to traverse the ocean and hit several countries or also known as tele tsunamis are often the result of a very large earthquake like for example the one in indonesia in 2004 or the one in japan in 2011. so these tsunamis and especially the tsunami that we're going to create in a second are going to be a result of a very very large earthquake so we're going to click on tsunami right here add uh, the highest magnitude and let's just put it somewhere right uh, here now, I've only added one, but I'm also going to add the second one in a few minutes, just so that uh, we actually destroy this half of the city as well. And this will be an actual tsunami caused by an earthquake. And while we're waiting for those tsunamis to arrive, and basically this is after an earthquake somewhere offshore from this fake Frankfurt, we're going to talk briefly about uh, some of the other facts about tsunamis. Uh, one of them, of course, is that the deadliest tsunami known to us was in 2004. This was the tsunami uh, that hit the Indo-Pacific countries after the Indian Ocean earthquake on December 26 of 2004 and this killed uh, something like 230,000 people in many many different countries including Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia um, and even African countries as well. But interestingly tsunami is actually an accepted scientific word even though in Japanese it means harbor wave and tsunamis are not harbor waves they go all the way into inland they go all the way into the land up to about 10 kilometers which is something that we uh we've measured many times including the more recent 2011 or, um, tsunami in japan that basically traveled up to 10 to 15 kilometers inland so definitely not a harbor wave but nevertheless it's been accepted for many years and people today uh use tsunami as a scientific term as well now another common misconception about uh tsunamis and how they're generated is that they can actually be generated by um, exploding a nuclear bomb under the water. US military actually tried that um, back in the 50s and they were really disappointed that you can't actually make um, a tsunami that way. As a matter of fact, most of the energy when you detonate something under the water is dissipated uh, and creates a lot of steam and a very very large column of water but it does not create a very strong wave and the wave dissipates even quicker than that uh, than the one from the asteroid so uh, nuclear weapons or asteroids do not create tsunamis another misconception about tsunamis is that sometimes they're known as tidal waves because they kind of resemble a tidal wave that's uh, a wave caused by the moon uh, or sun tides lunar or um, solar tides unfortunately that's also not the case we can actually predict um tidal waves really really well but we cannot predict tsunamis and is that what I is that what I see right there is that a tsunami maybe maybe that's the one maybe a tsunami coming yeah look at that that's definitely a tsunami see how the ships are actually <laughs> they're being lifted by this crazy uh, huge wave approaching us yep that, it's coming we're gonna watch it from this angle and uh so yeah um Tidal waves are not tsunamis either, and they, they do behave quite differently. Now, tsunamis, um, like I said, are not waves. They don't actually have wave-like behaviors, but uh, they do have a wavelength. Usually, this wavelength is very, 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 very long. So, a tsunami usually has a wavelength that's uh, 200 or even more kilometers uh, long, whereas a normal wave only has uh, anything from 20 to 100 meters. So, in other words, um, each of these crests that you see has um, a distance between them of uh, several hundred kilometers but as they approach closer and closer to land they actually get larger and larger in size and they kind of uh, come closer and closer together and an actual tsunami especially a powerful one can last for um for many many hours as these crests hit uh hit the ground over and over and over and over again so when the first uh, wave hits the ground that's only going to be the first wave then there's going to be another one after a few hours or possibly um something like several minutes 
and then there's going to be another one and another one. And this can last for many, many, many hours. The one in Japan lasted for uh, close to about 12 hours and you could actually watch the videos on YouTube where people were actually waiting from um, daytime to evening for the tsunami to actually finish. And so here comes our beautiful wave, our, actually not a wave, here comes our beautiful tsunami. And you can see the water retreating and adding to the uh, large crest that's about to hit the shores here. Oh, they look bigger from a distance. I don't know why it, it decreased in size suddenly. But it is nevertheless pretty big. The Coast Guard is warning of a tsunami approaching the area. Residents should avoid roads and waterfronts. Well, let's uh, pause the game for a second and just take a look at it. So you can see there's two crests coming. They're a little bit too close uh, compared to what the, it would be in reality. But nevertheless, this is going to be fun to watch. So we're going to maybe accelerate the game a little bit. The tsunami bit. has struck the city. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. So here comes our tsunami hitting the uh, right side of the city, basically destroying everything on its way. And this is a pretty large one too. This is actually a much larger tsunami than I expected. It looks like it might actually completely destroy our entire city. But we'll see what happens. We'll see if anything survives. This is definitely a very interesting uh, simulation to watch. Even though it's not particularly physically realistic, it is definitely the best simulation I've seen of a tsunami hitting, the, hitting anything. Except for this bus. This is definitely not something that you would expect to happen. And generally speaking, tsunamis do actually decrease in speed as they approach the shore. So this is actually what's happening here. All right, so let's look at what happens to our super expensive uh, house here that was on the shore. And let's see if it survives the tsunami effects. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, tsunamis do actually move a little bit slower as they approach land. And they, uh, they don't lose energy very quick, but they do uh, lose energy as they hit different objects. Obviously not this house, but as they uh, kind of destroy more and more stuff here, they will eventually dissipate in energy and slow down. And here we go. Let's see what happens. Good boy, house. It was nice knowing you. All right, it's totally covered by the water. Wow, this is a much larger body of water than I expected. Now, here's what all of this looks from the side. I'm actually just going to show you all of this in real time as the actual wave covers absolutely everything in this interesting, somewhat uh, fake city of Frankfurt. We're going to actually accelerate time a little bit just so that it, it does all of this destruction a little bit faster. Now, interestingly, one of the survival tips for, um, you know, surviving tsunami is obviously as soon as you see the drawback, basically water leaving the shore as the tsunami absorbs it, is to run for the hills. But if you are hit by a tsunami, apparently you're not supposed to be swimming in it. Try to find something that flows and just grab onto it and try to stay afloat. Has struck the city. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. This lady sounds very upset, but we already knew that was happening. And um, so, interestingly, um, just floating on the water would probably be the only way to survive because this can uh, last for many, many hours. So if you try to resist the water and just swim, you will just run out of energy and very likely drown. Um, so grabbing onto something or trying to reach height is really the only way to survive. Or obviously be on a boat like this. Actually, never mind. This boat just got destroyed. Maybe the boat like this. That, that one will probably live, right? Anyway, so this tsunami is definitely destroying the entire city. I didn't expect it to cover everything, but it looks like it just keeps going and going. And we would like to see the damage afterwards. So we're going to come back to all of this and see what's left over there after the tsunami is finished with our city. So let's just watch it from here, accelerate the game and watch the destruction unfold. And it looks like it even reached our downtown area, destroying a lot of these uh, skyscrapers that we had. So even if you're in a skyscraper, 
it seems to do a lot more damage than I imagined it would. This was a magnitude 10 tsunami that basically is covering some of these buildings completely, which is actually very, very surprising, but very beautiful nevertheless. And let's actually see what uh, all of this looks like from the street level. Actually, right there, there's a bunch of people just kind of standing on the uh, Paradox logo. That's the company that made uh, this game. And, uh, well, I think they might be in trouble. This is what actually happens if you don't run for cover. Now let's talk a little bit more science here. So here's the first wave that's kind of destroying everything. Then after the first wave, there is what's known as a drawback. There's basically kind of, it's not going to be that empty, but it's going to be a lot more shallow. And the second wave then hits again and uh, basically eliminates everything that the first wave didn't destroy. Then another drawback, and then there might be a third wave. A little bit smaller in this case, but it might actually be larger in reality. And so when both of the waves are finished with their destructive pathway, uh, there might be absolutely nothing left. Uh, as in this case here, where you'll see that there is actually very, very little left except for some of the larger buildings. These three buildings might survive, but all of our little houses, including, of course, our favorite uh, expensive house that was somewhere over here, I think. Yeah, it was actually right here. All of the houses are basically gone. Everything is destroyed, except for the traffic lights. Traffic lights survived, and they still work, but there, there are no cars to follow the traffic lights. Oh, also, this statue is alive. I don't even know what that represents, but it's still standing. And that's basically what we have if a tsunami strikes a city. And you know what? Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something about tsunamis. You know a little bit more about misconceptions and uh, things that do not produce tsunamis. And hopefully you now understand that only earthquakes, landslides, and in some cases very large volcanic eruptions when a lot of land is displaced can actually produce a tsunami that would be powerful enough to destroy many, many things. But things like nuclear weapons and asteroids and a lot of other things that people think produce tsunamis do not actually make them. They just make waves, but not tsunamis. Now I'm gonna wait a few minutes and wait for all of this wash away to return back into the ocean. And that's essentially where all of the destructive material is going to wash into the ocean and stay there and possibly reach other countries. This is what happened to the Japanese tsunami where after a year or so, people in countries like um, US and Canada started to basically um, find these objects from Japan after the 2011 Japanese uh, tsunami. And um, essentially the tsunami has finished. This is what's left of our Frankfurt. It's been completely eliminated. Surprisingly, the airplane was able to land in the water there. Um, but yeah, there's absolutely nothing left except for the um, larger objects like the stadium that's suddenly back online and the um, some of the larger skyscrapers that we had. But everything smaller, everything close to the water shore and everything that was not essentially protected has been destroyed. And that's what tsunamis do. They destroy so much more than any other natural disaster, except for maybe a very massive earthquake in the middle of the city. And maybe we'll talk about this in one of the future videos, but for now, that's all I wanted to do. And as you can see, after the tsunami, my population decreased from, what, 141,000 to about 14 or 15,000. Our current population in this fake Frankfurt is 14,400 people. So something like 90% uh, uh, of the entire population has been basically uh, killed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. But uh, we are increasing the population numbers, which is very interesting because this was uh, an area that was completely destroyed. And anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to share this video, don't forget to like it and possibly leave a comment about uh, what have I forgotten about tsunamis. Was there anything important that I didn't mention? Please let me know. Also subscribe to this channel and maybe consider supporting us on Patreon as well. But you know what? As long as you watched it and enjoyed it, I'm already happy. Come back tomorrow, you'll learn something else and we're going to use video games for education. I'll see you guys later, game me later and as always... Bye bye. Poor Frankfurt. I've destroyed you twice. I might do it again.